If you were raised a Christian, did you ever sit in church and wonder about the Adam and Eve story as a child? I did. How about the theory of evolution? It made no more sense to me than creationism. I always felt there was something that made much more sense out there. Michael Cremo felt the same and has spent 40 plus years ferreting out missing pieces of our ancient past, which he has documented in Forbidden Archaeology, The Hidden History of the Human Race. We had a fascinating conversation recently in which he shared his views on why the Darwinian theory of evolution has become essentially state-sponsored in spite of a great deal of scientific evidence to the contrary. The first place I looked was in textbooks. In the textbooks, I didn't see any evidence for extreme human antiquity. I saw only the discoveries that support the currently dominant evolutionary theories about human origins. But I decided, let me look beyond the textbooks. Let me look at the original scientific reports published in the professional scientific journals by archaeologists, geologists, and other earth scientists. And let me see what I find there. When I started doing that, I found dozens of reports of scientists finding human bones, human artifacts, and human footprints many millions of years old. And that was a surprise to me. I didn't know I was going to find that. I, I had a suspicion such evidence might be there, but I was really shocked to see just how much such evidence there was. And then I had to ask myself a question. If this evidence is there in the original scientific reports, why isn't it in the textbooks? And that led me to see there's a process of knowledge filtration that goes on in the world of science. And it's something that philosophers of science and historians of science have understood for a long time, mm -hmm. namely that theories will sometimes govern how scientists treat evidence. If there is a dominant theory at some particular point in time, it's quite possible that scientists who are supporters of that very dominant theory will look at evidence that supports their theory in a very lenient way. In other words, mm -hmm. this evidence will pass through their knowledge filter very mm -hmm. easily, and that means students will read about this evidence in textbooks, people will see scientists talking about it on television specials. Uh, if they go to the local museum, they'll see these things on display. But if there's evidence that radically contradicts the dominant mm -hmm. ideas, it tends to get filtered out. Mm -hmm. Not because it's bad evidence, but because it contradicts a dominant theory. This is a must-see video if you've ever had an interest in the origin of our species. You can watch the entire video at cmn.tv.